Hey guys, Will here. Now today we're taking a look at the VNM Handbrake V1 for PC sim racing. Now this is one of the sleekest looking handbrakes that we've tested here at Booster Media and features a 200 kilogram load cell. So today we're gonna put it through its paces and see whether this is the handbrake for you. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, quick thank you to VNM for sending across this handbrake and of course their shift that we looked at a couple of days ago for us to check out. Now if you do decide you want to pick up this or any of the other gear that you see in today's video, there will be some links down in the description. Some of those will be affiliate links, so if you want to help support the channel at no additional cost to you, then that is an awesome way of doing so. Now something that you might not be aware of is that we've started adding written versions of most of our review videos on our website too. So there's a huge variety of sim racing hardware reviews available there, boostedmedia.net to check that out or there's a link down in the description below. But let's get started on today's review. Okay, so this is the VNM Handbrake V1. There's also a V1.5 Rally version available on their website, so you can check that out for more details. Now, this is a PC-only piece of sim racing hardware, and it comes in at 229 US dollars. Obviously, you'll need to factor in taxes and shipping on top of that. And if you're buying in Australia at the time we're making this video, it comes in at 349 Australian dollars, and that does include GST. Now, there are a couple of accessories available for this as well, one of which is the Pro Kit, which comes in at 30 39 US dollars. That includes the five replacement springs, which you see here in front of me, as well as a 90 degree adjustment arm to make the handbrake go from an upright orientation to a sideways orientation with the bar like this, and then the lever on top of that. And we'll show you that in detail a little later on. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, there is plenty of provision for various different mounting options on this handbrake. However, there is also an additional side mount bracket available that comes in at 23 US dollars or 25 Australian dollars. And that also provides a really convenient way of mounting this alongside your VNM shifter. And we'll show you that later on in today's video too. So inside the box, you'll get the fully assembled handbrake and a conveniently long two meter USB two cable as well. Well. Now this is going to sound a little bit weird, but the first thing that jumped out to me about this handbrake is just how inconspicuous it is. Because once you install this on your rig, provided that most of the other stuff on your sim rig is black, which most rigs are these days, it blends in really nicely. It doesn't stand out like dog's balls and it doesn't draw your attention away from what you're trying to do. And particularly for content creators like me, that is a really important factor. So something that shouldn't be overlooked with this. You can of course see the elastomer and the spring in the front, as well as the 200 kilogram Mavin load cell. But otherwise the entire construction other than just the fasteners is all this beautiful black anodized aluminium. Another thing that jumps out to me straight away is just how smooth the CNC machining on this is. Well, there's no sharp edges anywhere to speak of, which certainly can't be said for some of the other handbrakes that we've tested, particularly the Fnatic handbrake, although that is quite a lot cheaper than we're looking at today. So we would expect higher quality here. And speaking of quality, we've got eight millimeter thick aluminium on the sides and base four millimeter thick aluminium for our mechanical parts just in here. And then if we spin around on the back, we've got nice thick 10 mil aluminium for our mounting plate. And you can see the mounting holes on the back there. So there is plenty of provision here for mounting. We've got the back plate, obviously, which becomes the bottom plate if you use the 90 degree angle adapter in the Pro Kit. We also have some mounting holes on either side, which you can use. No provision on the base though. You can see that's where our connection for our USB sits. So you will, of course, need to make sure that you leave enough clearance for that connector, which goes in like this. It's a little keyed USB connected with four pins. So that's nice to see as well. It's not gonna come loose or get knocked out of your rig. So that slides in. If you line up the key correctly, there we go screws into position and that is never gonna fall off your rig. Now size wise, I found for me, this was pretty much ideal as well. I was able to mount it in an upright orientation and have the lever nice and close to my steering wheel. But also if I had it mounted flush against my rig like so with the adapter, then the handle was still in a convenient place to reach as well. So I think they've done a really good job here in terms of versatility with the form factor. Some of the other handbrakes that I've tested in the past have either been far too long or just too short, depending on where you mount them on the rig. And it can really sort of limit your mounting options. You kind of have to work around the size of the handbrake to make everything else work on your rig. Whereas with this, I was able to mount this in pretty much any position without too much issue. So let's talk about the mechanism now. It looks quite complex here at face value, but it's actually quite simple and quite effective in how it operates. So we've got a shaft running through the center here. This operates as a pivot point and you'll notice a couple of sealed metal ball bearings on either side to ensure nice smooth operation. And that is another thing that's really stood out to me with this handbrake is just how quiet and smooth it is in operation. But obviously you'll see that later on. So as we pull the lever down, it pivots on the shaft here. That is then connected via another bearing system to this aluminum CNC machined clevis here that pushes down 
on our elastomer and spring stack. You can see as I pull that lever down, the load cell actually deflects. So if we have a little look in the side here, it gives you a better idea of how this works. So we've got the back portion of the load cell, which is bolted to the chassis, so that doesn't move. Then we've got a couple of holes here in the aluminium block that allows for some flex in the aluminium itself. So as we apply force to that load cell, the front half is gonna deflect downwards relative to the fixed position back half. And that relative movement is what's interpreted as breaking force inside the sim. So the sealed metal bearings provide a nice smooth operation. You'll also notice a little elastomer bump stop here too, and that provides a nice cushioned feel when the handbrake returns to its zero position, as well as eliminating any metal to metal contact. So it remains pretty much silent in its operation, I would say. And then from there, the entire feeling of the handbrake is purely stipulated by the preload that you place on your spring stack and the selection of elastomers and springs, which you choose. Again, obviously, depending on whether or not you purchase that pro kit. So the way that works is simply winding in or winding out our little spring perch here. You can see as I wind that out, it's releasing the preload on that spring, and that is gonna create a softer overall feeling. If we wind the preload in, then the initial amount of force required to get things moving is that little bit stiffer. And you'll of course see this later on when we're up and running on the rig, but the thing that I really like about this is the fact that it does give you a nice, clearly defined threshold point where the spring compresses and you start to get into the elastomer. And just like with a good load cell or hydraulic brake pedal, that allows us to establish good muscle memory to always be consistent with our braking inputs and our modulation. Let's talk now about how we can actually change out the springs in our stack here for the springs that come in the optional pro kit. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is release any preload that is on your spring stacks, so the springs become completely non-captive or are able to rattle around freely like so. Then you're gonna grab an Allen key and you're gonna release the two bolts which are holding this in position. Now this can be a little bit fidgety because as you saw before, these are actually passing through a metal bearing. So what happens is the entire thing tries to free spin. So what I like to do is grab a second, so what I like to do is grab a second Allen key and Kind of turn them both in unison here. But if you get it right and you kind of apply the same amount of tension on both sides, they come loose like so. We can pop those out and finish this off with our fingers. Oh, dropped one, there we go. <laughs> it is a little bit fidgety, so I'm kind of glad that happened. It, it keeps it real, but we'll pop this guy out as well. There we go. Then the entire assembly can be lifted out of the load cells. So we've got a spring perch on the bottom and you can see again, that's a nice anodized CNC machined piece of aluminum. We've then got our metal spring and it doesn't matter which order you place these in the stack because obviously the weaker spring is always gonna compress first. Another spring locator or spring perch and then our elastomer. So say for example, we maxed out our preload adjustment. We still weren't quite happy with how stiff the handbrake was feeling. We could then swap out for either our blue spring or our red spring, which is the stiffest spring, put that in place of the yellow one, spring perch goes in, elastomer goes in, and then the base perch goes in. Make sure you don't get those two muddled up because that does have a little location collar there which sits in the bottom of our load cell. Now we do also have included in the pro kit to a harder elastomer if you find that the white one feels too squishy, but again, I was perfectly happy with the default yellow and white arrangement that came without the Pro Kit. So that was good. And just one quick word of warning here, if you are doing this with the handbrake mounted on your rig, just be careful you don't accidentally knock that lever because it will free fall down like that until it hits its uh, maximum threshold there. So you can imagine if that swings down and hits something on your sim rig, it could damage the thing it hits or it could scratch up and damage the nice black lever. So just be aware of that. But we can see there when we hold it on its side, the little hole that they've drilled in the load cell, so that allows the elastomer stack to push down and influence directly upon the load cell. Now there is one other adjustment that I wanna show you while we still have this apart. And it is important that you have the elastomer stack out when you make this adjustment. And this is the adjustment for the angle of the lever relative to the frame. So if we have a look around here on the back side, we can see this little cylindrical piece which is basically forming our bump stop as we saw before with the elastomer. Now you may notice if we look side on, the mounting hole where that's actually affixed to our side plates is a little bit offset. Now, if you've ever seen a camber adjustment plate on a real life road car, you may be familiar with the way this works. So you've probably already figured out, but what that offset allows you to do is rotate this pin around. And as you rotate it around the pivot point, it's gonna either move in 
or out depending on its position. So I'm just gonna quickly release that now so you can see how this works. It's actually quite clever how they've done this. Straight away, as soon as I undo those two bolts, this whole assembly is able to slide in and out freely. Now that's something that's frustrated me on a lot of pedal sets that I've reviewed. You find if you're trying to get a piece out like this, it's kind of wedged in with everything else that's screwed in for the side. You end up having to release a lot of other bolts that you don't necessarily want to touch just to get to the piece that you want. So I really like the way they've designed this. So if we slide this out, you'll see there's some little nuts on either side and the sides of those nuts as they slide into or interface with the groove on the sides basically creates our multiple adjustment points. So in the furthest forward position, or with the cam kind of facing that way, we can see the shifter is upright. If we rotate that around 180 degrees, so we can see now we're bringing the lobe towards us. But as we bring that up now, the shifter is sitting at about a 25 degree offset from upright. And then of course we do have a couple of different points in between that as well. So if we go one turn, it's sitting a little bit higher and you guys get the idea. Now that of course is gonna have an influence if we're using the 90 degree angle adapter from the Pro Kit 2. So then rather than having a 90 degree angle, we would have 115 degrees relative to the fixed position of the base. Now just while we've got the unit around on its side here, you'll also notice this little button on the side of our electronics module. So that is allowing us to switch between operation mode and DFU or flash mode for updating the firmware. And we'll talk about that process in just a minute over on the PC. There's also a little four pin plug next to that as well. Not sure exactly what that's for. It's not something that we're gonna to need to use as users. All the interfacing happens via the USB connection that we looked at before. So I think that's everything we need to cover in terms of hardware. So I'm gonna get this reassembled and head on over to the SIM rig. While I'm doing that, if you guys can head down to that like button and give it a little tickle for us, that is an awesome way to help make sure that this video gets shown to more SIM racers like you. So let's do it. So let's jump in now, take a look at the VNM configuration tool. Now, if you've already seen our review of the shifter, you will know that this software is responsible for configuring all the various different options in terms of hardware available from VNM. So we've got a tab here for base. If you have a wheelbase hardware, we've got a shifter tab, a pedal tab, and of course a handbrake tab, which is what we're gonna be looking at today. Now the software is a little bit more, I guess, cluttered than you get from the likes of Fnatic and Acer Tech SimSports, for example, but everything that you need is relatively accessible here. And there are Instruction manuals are relatively clear as well. So if there is an issue with something like needing to do a firmware update, even though it is quite complex and it was a little bit scary even for me, having done thousands of firmware flashes over the years, it is relatively easy to just follow through the instructions as long as you don't get overwhelmed and get everything done. We did actually need to do a firmware update on the handbrake here to get the display running at a refresh rate higher than one hertz but you can see everything's operating perfectly fine here now. So in terms of options for the handbrake, you have the option to choose between various different devices. So if you have multiple devices connected to your system for some reason, you can choose which one you want to operate on. We can see the ID of the selected device on the right hand side here. Then we have a calibration button here. Now it does come factory calibrated, so it is plug and play, but if you are changing the elastomers and springs, which you saw in the earlier section of the video, obviously you will need to recalibrate here. And it's as simple as just pressing the calibrate button pulling it to the maximum amount that you wanna to have to pull it in the game and then releasing it back to zero and clicking on finish. And that sets the calibration, pretty straightforward stuff. Now you may notice over on the right hand side here, there's a system log and we can see when we completed that calibration, it says that it was actually sent to the device. So I believe that the firmware module on the device itself is actually storing that calibration, meaning that that calibration will carry across to any SIM title that you use, even if you're running something like iRacing, which has its own calibration in there. So when you go in and calibrate, just like what we see with Acer Tech Sim Sports and Husing Velt pedals, for example, uh, all you need to do is just pull to the maximum, release to the minimum, and that calibration will stay across all your various different SIM titles. Now that is important because it means that muscle memory is retained across all the various different SIM titles that you may be be driving. Now, if we look down the very bottom middle of the screen here, we can see the raw data coming in from the handbrake as well. So if we pull that to the absolute maximum, you can see there 65,535. So that means 65,535 points of resolution or 16 bit resolution with this load cell and control module, which we have connected here. So plenty of resolution there. I can't imagine anybody being able to feel the difference between say a, uh, a 12 bit and a 16 bit resolution handbrake. But for those who do care, 16 bit resolution. Now moving further over to the right hand side here, we can see some various different presets too. So we can choose between linear, sine, exponential one, exponential two and sine two. So if we choose linear, you can see a red line here 
which represents the output as it's seen by the sim. So as we move the handbrake, you can see the raw data down the bottom and how that responds. And the output is then modified depending on the curve which you select here. Now you can manually adjust these two. You can click on individual nodes and adjust that to your heart's content. Now for the majority of people, linear is probably gonna be okay. You may wanna set a curve like this if you wanna have a slightly slower response. So as you start to pull the handbrake, the response is a little bit slower. And then when you really pull into it, when you start to get into that elastoma later on in the response curve, that's when it really starts to bind and lock up the rear wheels. But again, it's gonna depend on the types of driving that you're doing and what your personal preferences are there. So it's good that we've got various different options here. You can see exponential two is kind of the opposite. So it ramps up quickly and then tapers off at the top. And then we've got a couple of sine curves in here as well, should you wish to use those. Now, just like what we saw with the calibration before, if we do, we'll go with a linear response for now. If we hit the save button, we can see down the right hand side under the system log, that calibration or that response curve has now been flashed to the device. So that will be modifying the signal as the sim sees it coming directly out of the handbrake. And as far as the software's concerned, it's as simple as that. Okay, so just wanted to really quickly run you through my impressions of this handbrake. We have been running it for a number of months now on the rig, and obviously we will show you some driving footage and talk you through that experience in just a minute. But I just wanted to quickly run you through my impressions in situ here before we get into that. So what we're running here is the default setting with the white elastomer and spring. And I actually ended up preferring this setting by quite a lot. We did run through all the various different configurations. And the reason I like this was it gives you a good, nice progressive feel as you pull the lever down to the point where the spring becomes fully compressed and you start to really get into the elastomer. Now you can actually see the elastomer is deforming a little bit there as we're compressing the spring. So it is a combination of the two being affected there, but you have a really nice clearly defined threshold point there. Similar to when we talk about load cell brakes, how it's really important to have a point where you're braking to your maximum and then being able to modulate around that. And this provides a very similar kind of sensation. So for me, I have this calibrated so the point where I'm maxing out the spring is where my wheels are locking. And then around that point, I can modulate the force to either allow the wheels to slip a little bit more or bind up a little bit more. Now, generally speaking, I mean, I'm not an experienced rallycross driver or rally driver by any means, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of other people out there that can comment down below on this. But for me, generally, I'm kind of just pulling at the brake, getting it, getting those wheels to lock up. Once the car's actually moving sideways and has that momentum, you generally don't need to you know, do too much more. Sometimes you wanna modulate a little bit more just to sort of, I guess, adjust the slip angle, so to speak. But for me, at least, I'm generally finding I'm kind of just pulling at it, getting the wheels, getting the car moving sideways, and then just slowly backing off from that point. You guys will see in the driving footage. Now, just to quickly run through adjustment here, obviously you can adjust the preload as you guys saw earlier. We did run it through from the minimum setting all the way through to the maximum setting. And as you can see with this overlaid footage, minimum setting, there's not, I wouldn't call it slop. Obviously it will depend on the amount of preload that you have on the spring assembly via the little collar, as again, we saw earlier. But at the minimum setting, there isn't a whole lot of sensation or feeling in that initial bit of pull. Whereas at the default setting, you do still get a nice progressive feel which makes it a little bit more conducive to establishing muscle memory. So I thought that was an important thing to comment on. With the stiffer setting there, so the stiff spring and the stiffer elastomer, what I found was that there just wasn't a lot of sensation there at all. It was just like you were kind of bending a piece of metal or pulling into a piece of metal to try and bend it rather than having a clearly defined threshold point there. So I found that I wasn't able to be quite so precise with the handbrake movement as I can be with this setting. So I think for the majority of people, you're probably gonna end up with this same combination, but I do like the fact that they include a couple of options there for those who might want to do something outside the norm there. But in terms of other impressions before we get into driving, the main things are just how silent this is in operation. So you can hear a little bit of a noise as the spring compresses up at the very end, but it is almost silent. With headphones in, you can't even hear it. There's no metal to metal contact. There's no clacking, there's no greeking or groaning. And again, we have been running this for a couple of months now on the rig and haven't had any issues. And as you guys saw as well, there's also a ball bearing system in the pivot point here too. So that all operates very, very smoothly, no issues at all. We also have the little elastomer insert at the bump stop here as well, which has a nice amount of squish to it. Doesn't feel like metal to metal contact. And obviously you don't have the metal to metal clacking sound that would be associated with that too. So again, that is a silent bump stop, but it has a nice solid feel to it without being too soft. And yeah, honestly, I feel like they've really nailed this. Between the amount of adjustment that you have and just the overall mechanical feel of it, the smoothness, the quietness, everything is exactly as I would want it for a mechanical handbrake.
So conclusions on the VNM handbrake, and I think ultimately this one's just gonna boil down to whether you need something of this caliber on your sim rig. For me, as a casual rally style driver and somebody who does drifting very infrequently and very inadequately when I do so, I probably don't need something this good on my rig and I probably wouldn't spend the money. But if you are relying on precision handbrake inputs for your style of driving, then this absolutely is gonna give you what you need. And I do think that given what it brings to the table, it does represent good value for money. It's just a question of whether you actually need what it brings to the table or not. Now, if we compare this to something like the Fnatic handbrake, for example, that has a lot of side to side flex in it. It doesn't have a lot of precision in the inputs. And every other handbrake, with the exception of some of the hydraulic handbrakes that we've tested in the past, really haven't given me anywhere near the same level of precision as this does with the way that we ended up adjusting this with preload and the default elastomer and spring stack. So the thing that I really like about this handbrake, and I think the thing that sets it apart from some of the cheaper ones that we've tested in the past, is just that modulation that you're able to achieve around that pressure point. You can really get a good sense of exactly how much force is being applied and modulate that slip angle around that. So if that is something that you rely on heavily or something that you think you benefit from, then absolutely I think this is a good option. Now in terms of build quality, all those things, absolutely no issues whatsoever. I really love the presentation. I love that it's all black as well, so it integrates onto your rig nicely. It's not gonna be you know, attracting too much attention away from what you're wanting to look at. Uh, it's got plenty of mounting options available too, no issues at all with regards to that. Silent operation, nice and smooth ball bearings in all the places you need them, nice solid construction and really nothing at all to nitpick out of the design of this thing. So I guess to summarize, I think that this ticks all the boxes and I really can't think of too many reasons why anybody would need to spend more than this to achieve a good result. Maybe other than just that sensation of hydraulic feeling, although this does come very close. I mean, you know, just the, the progressive feeling that I get through the lever as I pull it is very, very close to what we get with a hydraulic, well, at least the hydraulic ones that I've tested in the past. So in summary, I really can't think of any good reason not to recommend this. The software works well, although it is maybe a little bit more complex than it needs to be. I do like the fact that it's all integrated into one package though. So if you buy other VNM products, it all runs through the same package and you won't have to download additional software. The firmware upgrading process isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. That was probably the main thing that I didn't like about this, but that's not something that you like likely to have to do more than once when you first buy it, if at all. So I really don't see that being a major detractor. And yeah, all in all, a big thumbs up from me. So I really hope this video has helped you out. Please do leave a thumbs up on the video if it has. Consider subscribing as well so you don't miss future review videos. And if you do decide you wanna pick one of these up, we've got a few options when it comes to affiliate links depending on where you are in the world. So check out the links down in the description below for those. We really appreciate your support there. And thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon. Bye.